Hi, my name is Alicia Roth. I'm a program manager with Generation Citizen New England, and I'm incredibly delighted to share with you a conversation I recently had with Tara Thibodeau of Warren, Rhode Island's Parks and Recreation Department. But before I get into that, I'm going to share with you a little bit about Rhode Island Civic Learning Week. Rhode Island Civic Learning Week 2023 seeks to sustain and strengthen constitutional democracy by highlighting the civic knowledge, skills, and dispositions gained both in and outside the classroom that provide the foundation for an informed and engaged populace. Civic Learning Week seeks to further energize the movement to prioritize civic learning for all Rhode Islanders. This week's events will highlight the voices of our youth and teachers, as well as our civic leaders. And you can find more events from this week at ricivics.org 2023 CLW. Rhode Island Civic Learning Week is organized by the Rhode Island Civic Learning Coalition which is a multiracial, multi-ethnic, and multi-generational coalition committed to ensuring that all Rhode Islanders, including young people and those most marginalized from our democratic system, have equitable access to high quality civic learning opportunities. And this week's events are co-hosted in partnership with Courageous RI, Generation Citizen, the Rhode Island Department of Education, Rhode Island Department of State, United Way Rhode Island, and URI's Media Educational Lab, as well as teachers and students from across Rhode Island. Now let's get to the good stuff. I talked with Tara about what parks and recreation is so important for civic life, and what can youth do to sustain and maintain this incredibly vital civic resource. Enjoy. Tara, I would love to start with hearing a little bit more about you. Um, so if you could take a moment to introduce yourself, your role, and how you got into this line of work, that'd be great. So uh, my name is Tara Thibodeau, and uh, thank you very much for inviting me to do this. I, I got into this role as a uh, helping a friend. So, I mean, that's how I became the Parks and Recreation Director. I took over in 2015. But I really started when I was a child. Um, so I started as a child in these programs. And as a, a, a teenager, I worked for the program. As a young adult, I was a board member. And then I'm a mom of six, and all of my children have gone through the programs. And then, of course, uh, now I am the director. Uh, so it kind of was just a natural progression. So when we say parks and recreation, what's included in that? So for me, parks and recreation means kind of enhancing your daily life. Uh, how do we make your life better, the community's life better, your family's life better? And how do we use the resources that are available to do that? So, you know, we have concerts, we have movie nights, we have sporting events, we have facilities that can be rented. We have, we live on the Narragansett Bay, so we have water access and beach access. Um, we offer dog parks and playgrounds. And one of my newest things is a mentor program. So we try to make your life better. We try to give you places to escape um, and to socialize and communicate with others in a less stressful environment. I really appreciate what about what you shared there was that it's about quality of life and improving your quality of the quality of life, which really brings me to the second question that I had for you. And that was, uh, why are parks and recreation such an important part of civic life? And to provide some context about why I'm asking that question, the organization I work for, Generation Citizen, is really focused on the civic education of students um, who are in middle school or high school and giving them hands-on civic learning opportunities. And so we are interested in helping our young folks understand just how much of our lives um, 
our every single day lives is related to government and how we all have a voice and the ability to improve the, our quality of life. So thinking about that, why are the parks and recreation departments so important in civic life? So I think the biggest advantage or importance is connections. Uh, it is the way that the community gets together. It's your social connections. It's your bond through generations, uh, things that we normally take for granted. It is, uh, you know, it strengthens recreation, parks and recreation. They strengthen your community. Uh, you know, you, you get more when you accomplish it through a strong community. And when you put a face on things, you have less anonymous, you have more interdependence and responsibility. You have those connections again with the kids. You have the connections with the adults. Uh, it's really about, you know, community strengthening and again, the stress relief, you know, because everybody is usually happier when they're at a park, you know, or a uh, beach or, you know, playground. <laughs> Thank you so much for really elevating the importance of public spaces and creating opportunities to develop really positive relationships with people that we might otherwise not meet. I mean, like folks don't even really meet their neighbors, their next door neighbors anymore. And um, these events provided by Parks and Recreation and the spaces provided them by Parks and Recreation where you can literally just hang out for free are just so incredibly important in developing that sense of community um, and uh, belonging. Um, so with that in mind, what can our youth do to make sure that we have these public spaces and events and activities available? What can they do to maintain and sustain parks and recreation? So one is attending events. So joining us, uh, learning about your neighbors, participating in functions. The other is working for the Parks and Recreation Department. Again, I also, it was my first job and it was my favorite job. And I always tell my staff, it's going to be one that will always, you always remember because the children that you have as a camp counselor, remember you. And so you could be in town uh, when you're older and they'll still come up to you at the, a local establishment and say, oh, you were my camp counselor. So again, it's that generation bond and it's recognition. So of course, working for the Parks and Recs is, is a good start. Community projects, uh, even if it's just cleaning up litter, which you know seems to be an ongoing issue, uh, cleaning up litter and actually doing community builds, sometimes we actually do a lot of playground builds as a community. And so we bring in local national honor societies or, you know, groups that need community service work. So that's always a positive. And then we, our mainstay these days is a mentor program that we've created. And so, you know, working with youth, so pairing them with mentees and mentors that can just give them an, an extra pair of ears a little bit more guidance, a couple more tools for the toolbox. So, um, you know, that's probably, that is a, a grant that we received as a community through the Office of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency. And so um, this is, uh, I would say, some of the ways that our youth can, you know, participate in parks and recreation. And thus concludes my conversation with Tara Thibodeau of uh, Warren Parks and Recreation Department. Thank you so much, Tara, for joining me for that uh, insightful conversation about what Parks and Recreation is, why it's an important part of our civic lives, and how youth can start getting involved. And I would like to thank anybody who took the time to watch this video and I encourage you to check out the links that I provide and uh, other Civic Learning Week events. There's lots of opportunities available for students and teachers to join live events 
uh, with, together in the classroom as well as uh, other resources that are available on the uh, Rhode Island Civic Learning Coalition website. So again, thank you so much and enjoy the rest of Civic Learning Week.